Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Rima. And I'm Matthew. And you're out of order. Welcome back to the weekly film podcast where two vice presidents of the Homestead Film Club discuss something we love, and that is movies. movies. Um, we've learned a lot since our first episode. A lot, of, <laughs> a lot of ups and downs, lots of... Um, but you know what? When you're at rock bottom, the only thing goes <laughs> So I don't know if we were quite at rock bot. But it was it was pretty fun. There was there were some rough moments in there. I was I was listening, I was watching. Yeah. There were there were some bad times. Yeah, I don't think I'll last ever again on recording. I don't think that's something that I'll be doing. Yeah. Yeah. But we're back, round two. Round two. Better this time? We're gonna we're gonna improve exponentially. That's it. Yeah, that's our that's our goal. Only way only way to go is up from here. Only way to go is up. Just like Sting. There's a thing too. What? Sting. When the koala, he was like the only way you're at rock bottom, the only way to go is up. Was that when he was trying to buy back the theater? Isn't that the plot of the first one? Is he's yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, buy yeah. back oh, the yeah, theater? Yeah, that was the first one. Well, I love that movie, so I've never seen the second one. The first one wasn't that good. You've seen there was China one Town, good. But you haven't seen Sing. China Town's a great movie. The what only movie? good. It's like they're trying to. Tell you can't the tell one. me because he never saw it. I actually, I've not seen China. You <laughs> actually. I always say I've watched China. Town. It started as a bit with my friend, we think which was. We both him guys. We started with a bit with my friend where we were like, like how where we were like, dude, China's a great movie, and then um. He was like, yeah, it's a great movie. I'm like, you've seen it? And he's like, no, have you? And I'm like, no. So we're like, okay, we just need to pretend we've seen Chinatown now. Yeah, because, you know, it makes you look so like, like, yeah, I've seen Chinatown. You have I've seen it. Chinatown. Apparently it is a very good movie. Like, it's very well regarded. We I just have not seen it. We should find out. Like, we should sure. watch it. So, like, when people ask us, have you seen Chinatown? We can be like, yeah, you haven't. Yeah, you haven't. Can you imagine we watch it and it's actually just bad? It's, like, it's, I, it's not a good movie. Well, let's get I guess we'll have to today. find out. Yeah. We'll have to watch that down. Let's get into today's quote of the week. Quote of the week? Yes. Today's quote of the week is... I drink your milkshake. From There Will Be Blood, 2007, P.T. Anderson. Such a weird quote. Like, Man, it's a great quote. Okay. It's, such, it's probably an amazing mind. I've seen There Will Be Blood, so what is, what is the context? Okay, so There Will Be Blood is about this oil baron, all right? And he's played by Daniel Day-Lewis in one of, quite, poss- quite possibly... The greatest film performance of all time. Like, absolutely fantastic. Um, and he's talking to... I don't want to... Okay, spoiler alert for There Will Be Blood. Are you planning on seeing it? Yeah, but um, I have such bad memory, I'll probably forget what... Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, spoiler alert for There Will Be Blood. Skip forward a bit if you don't want to hear it. So, basically, he's like this oil baron, and he... Uh, like takes all the oil from like this little town and there's this little preacher guy and the preacher believes himself to be the messiah and the preacher is played by the riddler from batman uh-huh. uh, whose name i can never remember and so then he like years later when like um when daniel day Luce's life is falling apart like his son became his business competitor like he's going insane he like shows up and it's such a fantastic like it's a fantastic scene because then he starts screaming at him he's like because the pastor, um, the Riddler, he's trying to, like, sell him more land. Yeah. Like, hey, like, there's this land mm-hmm. in between all the land that you had, that you bought, that you drilled oil for. Yeah. And there's oil in there. And then he's like, no, there isn't. We own the land around it. Mm-hmm. I already took your oil. And he goes in a gray bond, and he's like, I... And that's where the, the line is. He's like, if, like I have a, if you have a milkshake, and I took my straw and went all the way around it, and went into, and then he's like, and then he's screaming in the face, like, I drink your milkshake. Um, he's saying, like, I took your oil, like, I... Like, trying to sh- assert ownership, or... Yeah, it's it's him, it's him, it's him breaking, it's him, like, oh, snapping, because then he murders, with a bowling pin, he murders the pastor. Dude. It's like that scene from Succession, where Tom, have you seen Succession? But it's like, for those of you who are cool, and have seen Succession, um, there's this scene in which Tom is talking to... I can never remember his name. The, the, their dad, Roy. They're they're talking to Ro- uh, Logan. They're talking to Logan, and Tom just like Tom's kind of like their mutt. Like he kind of just does whatever they say because he wants to like increase his ranks within the because um, he works for uh, his wife's family business. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, because he's married to Siobhan, which is Logan's daughter. 
And um, sorry, say that name again. Siobhan. Siobhan. Yeah, I love that name. I love the name Siobhan. Like a lot. Is it more of a V sound? Siobhan? Siobhan. Is it Siobhan? I thought it was like more Siobhan. I don't think you actually pronounce the B. Oh, it's my bad. Well, it, they say it like Siobhan. Like Siobhan. Siobhan. Well, that, okay, now I can't wait. Okay, Siobhan. say with a B and say without Siobhan. a B. Because now I think we've said it too much. Now Siobhan. my attention's pulled to it. They're like, they're merging together. Soft B. Like not Siobhan. Siobhan. Yeah, it's not Siobhan. Siobhan. Uh, There's a bug in our room. But they're on, this, they're on like their yacht. And Tom's, like, so sick of being, like, the scapegoat for all their issues, and he's just, like, sick of, you know, kind of being the underdog, and he literally takes the, like, the chicken leg off of Logan's plate and starts eating it, and then puts it back. It's, like, it's intense. It doesn't sound intense, but it was, like, what's going on? And that's how the I drink your milk Yeah, it's, like, very odd. Yeah. Yeah. That's very funny. Food, man. Really it's cool. such a great monologue, and I used a lot of the monologue from my review of it because it's so just good. Yeah. Then he's like, "You are not the Messiah. I am the Messiah." I drink your milkshake. I drink your milkshake. So that is the quote of the week. Yeah. There will be blood. Watch it if you haven't. I will. You should, and I'll watch Chinatown. Watch Chinatown not together. Really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, please pull up. So Matthew, what are we, what are we actually talking about today? I'm so glad you asked, Rima. So we both love films, obviously. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I also really like books. I do. I yeah. I really like books. What books? What's your favorite book? My favorite book, I think, would be... I really liked... I really liked Notes from Underground. Mm. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I really liked that book. I I've heard good things. It's really weird, and I, I really liked it because it had an unreliable narrator, which I really like. It's like when you can tell mm-hmm. that the person is, like, not in their right state of That's mind. what I love about Knives Out is, yeah. is the unreliable narration, the yeah. little details. Um, Russian literature is just, it can be so freaky and weird sometimes, and I really like that. I appreciate that. You know, they really, they really, the, the USSR and the Soviet Union <laughs> really did a number on them. So that was not at the time of it. I don't know. I don't know. When I was, um, my biggest experience with Russian literature is um, Chekhov. I read a lot of Chekhov. Oh. Um, Three Sisters, all that. I'm reading Anna Karenina right now. Is it good? Yeah, it is actually. Like it's slightly, it's slightly dull at first, but like once you kind of get into it, you're like, okay. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you love books. Yeah. I love books. You love movies. I love movies. Now a lot of times books, books. get turned into movies. And that's what we're discussing today. Yeah, we're talking about book adaptations into films and, you know, whether we love what we liked, what we didn't like. Which ones worked, which ones didn't work. Yep. Which books we really do not want to see turned into movies. Yeah. I don't think any James Baldwin book should be turned into a movie. What is James Baldwin in? I feel like I know him more from his, like, theses than his books. I have no idea about any of his theses, but... Um, he, they made Beale, If Beale Street Can Talk into a movie. Mm, Have you yeah. seen that? Was it good? I haven't seen it, but I've heard things about it. I feel like I usually have a bad habit. I feel like I, most of the time, don't realize a book is, like, especially recently, I feel like I only find out it's based on a book afterwards. After, yeah. And then I've already seen the show. Like, what happened, what just happened, there was a movie that just came out. That was, like, one of the nominees for Best Picture. That was based on a book. That wasn't Oppenheimer. Wow. Is it Killers of the Fire Moon? Killers of the, it might be Killers of the Fire Maybe. Moon. Um, no, because I wasn't nominated at all. Oh, it's going to kill me. Um, But it just like boils down to there's so many just movies. And that's why Best Adapted Screenplay is like there's some amazing ones in there because you don't even realize with a lot. Like the biggest example I point to when I'm like you don't realize that it's a movie based on a book is Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is based on a book. Yeah. And it's a fantastic book. But no one remembers it. It's a it's one of my favorite books. It's I think in my top ten. Really? It's a fantastic book. Jurassic Park is pretty science fiction y, right? Or is it like yeah. So okay. In my mind the main genre it's in is horror. Like people say it's not a horror movie because I don't think a horror movie needs to be scary for it to be horror. Five hundred days of summer is my favorite horror movie. My favorite is Zombieland. Or American Psycho, if you count that as as um horror. Psycho is pretty satire. Yeah, I feel like it's more crime and drama than anything yeah. else. Or not drama, thriller. Mm-hmm. 
but regardless. I like when, yeah. Um, what was I looking up? Oh, Best Adapted Screenplay Winners. But that, like, that's a movie based on a book. And I guarantee you most people don't know that. Yeah. Like, I think if you ask people, like, is Jurassic Park based on a book? I'm guessing a lot of them would not know. Um, Michael Christian wrote that. Yes. I, I really liked his book, uh, Prey. It was also another science fiction book, and it was about, like, um, these, like, nanobots or whatever that would, like, that, like, um, they invented and they kind of, like, became sentient and they had a mind of their own. And they would, like, slowly, like, just eat whatever was around them. It was, it was actually pretty, pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, it was a good book. Crate and Barrel mentioned in the first, like, five pages, so I knew I had to keep reading. You got to stay up there. It was a good book. Um... But I think the reason Jurassic Park works is because it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like the book. the 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 book is very good. The movie, the movie is very good. Like a real movie. Have hmm? you seen Parasite? Like, no. What? He's like, he's like one thing I love about this movie is that it feels like a real movie. Like when you go to the cinema and you just sit down and you're like this. So it's a movie. It's a movie. It's I mean, a it real is. Movie. <laughs> It is, it is a real movie. Yes, it is. But, um, like, I think that's just it. I think, like, unironically, it feels like a movie. You're watching it. You're watching the scene with it feel like it's the T-Rex. Yeah, you're yeah. watching the scene with the T-Rex. There's so many, like, you're watching the scene with, um, you're watching the scene in the kitchen. You're watching the scene, the uh, clever girl scene. There's just so many scenes in there. That just it doesn't feel like a book because it's not. It's not like very chronological. Like you're bumping around in different like different things are happening at the same time. Whereas in a book, like you move linear linearly through it, and it's like this scene happens and then this scene happens. Whereas yeah. like in a movie, it's like this is happening at the same time as this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As well as there's just so many interesting, with Jurassic Park especially, there's so many interesting visual aspects as well true yeah like i mean how many times is the one shot of the mirror with the t-rex in it be parody the um what yeah it's a good scene yeah it's a great scene um the like glass of water rippling with the t-rex coming through that's probably my favorite scene from that movie yeah you're really finding it fun what I just, i'm imagining it now and i'm like just really finding I, dress park I, I, I think it's funny that the the flare is the same scene and that's kind of an iconic shot even just the intro, though. Welcome to Jurassic Park. And then John Williams' score. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just no longer laughing, Rima. Continue. Yeah, yeah. I'm just describing the movie. I'm passionate, okay? Oh, okay. Um, but I think that's just, I think that's where it comes in. I think that's really what sets Jurassic Park so far above most others. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I think is probably above most others? What? Um, The first Twilight movie. The first Twilight movie might be the most perfect thing I've ever seen. You're, I can't. I really hope you're joking right now, Rima. I'm only half joking. I'm you did not joking. just compare the first Twilight the first to Jurassic Twilight. Park. If you have seen the first Twilight, you will get it. If you haven't, you won't. Me and Mrs. Cicero were talking about this, and we were talking about how good the first Twilight movie was. And it's so I bad. I don't know who directed it, but it was... It's good. so it was bad. Funny. It was so good. It's not supposed to be funny in the most it's parts. Even the soundtrack was good. Every time I watch, like, a scene from Twilight, it reminds me of that one clip I always see on, like, Instagram and YouTube, and because like, I'm on TikTok. No, the one where it's like it's from a different movie, but it's Chris Evans. Do you know what I'm saying? It's Chris Evans and he comes up and it's like this girl like drawing her and her mother and it's like like and uh, and it's like stick figures, like really poorly drawn stick figures. It's like it's me and my mother and Chris Evans is like, You have her eyes. That's do you not know there's no way you don't know what scene I'm sorry. No what you're talking about, but it's just not it's not registered right. But yeah, the first Twilight movie I actually have I read the first Twilight book? I thought it was pretty good. It's it's like more pretty Mormon. There's a lot of Mormon values, <laughs> like purity, like purity culture and stuff like that. I'm not gonna. At first, I thought you meant morbid. No. And you misspoke, but no, you actually mean Mormon, like yeah, prime Utah Mormon. Exactly. Yeah, and I mean that's not a bad thing. It's just like you know something I noticed. 
And even like, even like, even just like the way the plot moved to the first movie, like the sad, we all felt so sad and were brought to tears when Bella was separated. And like, the way we're introduced to like Edward and I don't even remember the other guy's name. Jacob. Jacob. See, you know. You, you love okay, yes, I kn- no, I do not love the Twilight series. I take that back. I do not love the Twilight series. But seeing that, the music is so good. Whoever directed, whoever directed the first Twilight movie deserves deserves some sort of award. I mean, I also think we can't discuss legends of books to movies without talking about regard as some of the greatest movies of all time, the Lord of the Rings movies. My God. I actually do really love Lord of the Rings. Like they're so good. The building, the the amount of world building and just details incorporated into the books, and then also like transferred over to the movies. It's just it's so good. And like I thought it would be really boring because I'm not like I I honestly didn't think I was the type to like I don't even know fantasy. What is it? Fantasy. It's fantasy. Yeah, fantasy like um stories and stuff like that. But I actually really do, and I'm glad I gave it a chance because it's. Very good. It's so good. And, like, I mean, and that's why it won so many Oscars, just because... Didn't it win something for um, visual effects? Mm-hmm. I think, okay, so I remember Return of the King won a crud ton. And I think everyone considers it, like, Return of the King... Return of the King is the third one, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because Fellowship of the Ring... Twin yeah. Towers... Yep. And then... Uh, Return of the King. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. Um, I will admit, I'm not like, like, I love Lord of the Rings. I'm oh, super into it. Um, it's really good. I think everyone kind of considers it like, oh, it won so many Oscars as kind of like a culmination of a very well done series. Um, have you, you seen, you've read the Percy Jackson series, right? I feel like that's an exception. I have not. What? I have not. I always, because there was always such a big thing of like Harry Potter versus Percy Jackson. Jackson. I was a Harry Potter kid, and so I never read Percy. How did, um, okay. How did you not read Harry Potter? No, it is not. J.K. Rowling, not a great person, knows how to write. It's barely overrated book series. I haven't even read it, but I have Okay, it's only overrated because millennials treat it like it's the greatest thing on earth. Yeah, Percy Jackson didn't need Millennials to ruin it. It had the original film series. It had the original film series that to do that. Because don't try arguing the original films were good. I was pissed about how they were so bad. Yeah. They're so bad. Please, go ahead. Like, I don't know, for a movie about... Also, I hate when movies do this where they, like, the original characters, I think the kids in the Percy Jackson movies are, like, supposed to be 12, 13... Like, they make it seem like they're so much older than they actually are. And I feel like there was no reason for the movies to be PG-13. I mean, like, I'm not saying that they were crazy, but, like, there was no reason to them for them to, like, make them seem more mature than they were. And also, yeah. it was just bad writing. It was just bad writing. Not uh, the books. The movies. Well, that's how I kind of am, honestly, with also Harry Potter. Like, I feel like it's wrong. Is when you're reading the Harry Potter, it doesn't feel like Harry's 11. Like, in the first one. But then, like, you're watching the movie, and you're like, oh, that's an 11-year-old kid. Especially, honestly, more in the second one. And he's like, and, like that's a, a 12-year-old kid with a sword fighting a giant snake. When I was 12, COVID shut down my life, and I had to stay inside. I guess I was 13. It was on my 13th birthday. COVID hit. March 13th. Yeah. March 13th, 2020. My 13th golden birthday. Cool story, bro. Dang, yeah. <laughs> Take it to a publisher. Um, I love saying that. Just take it to a publisher. I started saying cool story, bro. Cool, cool story, story, bro. Oh, That's your new thing? Yeah. That was, yeah. But um, back to what I was saying, it just I mean, it's nuts. And then also, I'm in right now uh, Homestead for a theater production seminar. We're doing Puffs. Uh, yeah, the clock is wrong. The clock is stopped also. I don't know why you... It's also stopped. I don't know why you thought it was... Even if Broken Clock is right twice a day, um, but, like, we're doing Puffs, and Puffs is, like, a parody of Harry Potter, kinda, and it's going through the seven years of Hogwarts, 
but yeah and i'm like in the first one i'm a, i play 11 years old and then i'm only like 18 by the end one so it's like because it's like broken up in seven different sections kind of um but i don't know it's crazy i think and like the and the pop script even pokes strokes at it like this is a lot for 12 year olds to handle um so wow but no i, I totally get you from right there um, but yeah, they were just not good. They didn't really live up to the, and they weren't inaccurate. Like a lot of, they met, they cut out a lot of stuff in the movies to make time for, like the ending and like more important scenes. But like, it just didn't build up quite well. Well, going back to Jurassic Park, like Jurassic Park is not accurate to the book. Characters are good. Maybe because the characters are completely changed. And again, I think the book is also very good. But I think the book is probably better in a book format. Like I think if you made a straight book to film of Jurassic Park, it wouldn't be as good as the Jurassic Park we have. Like it, it just won't. I don't think. So I can't really give my speed on it. The first one's good. The second one's not. Because the second one, they literally were just like, "Yo, we want to make a sequel to this movie. Can you pump out a book so that we can make a movie out of it?" Yeah. Consumerism. Consumerism. We've discussed about it before. No, no, never. I think we had a little bit in our segment. So. We did, we did. But. Have you seen. What's that one book by John Green? Fallen Our Stars? I hate. You hate Fallen Our Stars? Fallen Our Stars movie so. I haven't seen them. Don't explain. Please, please explain. Okay. So there's like. That's one where they like have cancer, right? And it's like the cigarette in the mouth. It's like you hold the thing that kills you right between your teeth. Yeah, I don't appreciate it's a young adult book. What do you expect? I don't appreciate it at all. I was like, I was like, it's just so like, cause it, like I would, I would never like a guy that would say something like that. And I feel like no one would. But you're just not attracted to poets. Not poetry, it's just, it's just baloney. It's just nothing. It's not nothing. poetry. I love that. It's not poetry, it's just baloney. It's just so we get that on a t-shirt? <laughs> That'll be our merch. It's not poetry, it's just baloney. It's just not, it's not a real sentence. Like, what are you saying? And then, like, when they go to Anne Frank's house, and that is where they have their first kiss. What? Yes, <laughs> what? Yeah, her house is like a museum or something right now. Right? It's like, it's yeah. like do tours and stuff. It's in, and they have yeah. to make out in the Anne Frank house. That's is that a thing in the book? Have you read the book too? It's, it's, is it in the book? It's in both. It's so bad. Also, um, my friend Julia Stahl gave me um, an annotated copy of Looking for Alaska by John Green. Um, and like she read it and annotated it and her annotations were like funny. So she like gave them to me so I could like read them when she was leaving. She was in London, London now. I miss um, the stalls. Yeah, I do miss... Oh my god, did you know Ben? I knew Ben. Ben and I did theater together. Ben. He played... Um, He was in the original Apostle and they did it for one act a few years back. That's so cool. And then he and I did um one show together, As You Like It. Yeah. He was so nice, so funny. Yeah, Ben is... And he's so sweet. Ben Stoll, if you're listening to this... We miss you. I miss you. Give me a call. <laughs> we haven't talked in like two years. But I miss Ben Stoll. He's grown a lot as a person since then. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I like to think I have sure. two years. Sure. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Okay. So Baltimore Stars. They gave, I'm yeah, calling for Alaska. Yeah, they um, and she gave me a copy of the book, and there was this part where something about John Green and cigarettes, but he was like, "You smoke to enjoy it, and I smoke to die." And her annotation was like, "That's really, that's a really stupid way to kill yourself." So that's a really. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. It's like. A stupid line. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think the writing is good. Yeah, it's, it's a dumb line. Just like the Anne Frank scene really got me. I was like, no. And there's just like, maybe it's because I don't like the actors either. I don't like, I don't know her name, but I don't like the main character that plays the girl. I don't like the guy. Like, I just hate everything about it. Did you see Five Feet Away? Five Feet Apart? Yes, yes same, same difference. difference. <laughs> So every clip I see, it seems... I read the book, and I... Um... That's based on a book? Yeah. Good job. I know that's based on a book. Yeah. I, I was just bringing up that movie. Mm. Um, 
But there's just like there's like because there's like a few different types of books based on of movies based on books. There's like the big epic ones like Lord of the Rings, Jaws, Harry Potter, Jurassic Park. Then there's read Jaws. What is there to read? I have never actually read Jaws. Like who would read that? Then I feel like there's like the classics, you know, where it's like books that are so famous, so big that of course they were gonna get turned into movies. That's stuff like the To Kill a Mockingbird, which To Kill a Mockingbird, the original one fantastic mm-hmm. i do think honestly i like the play better than the movie um especially i saw the play down in milwaukee fantastic atticus finch is one of my favorite characters of all time i love that um but like you still know like the book is still better like mm-hmm. um so the books are usually better yeah. i can't think of many cases where the movie is better than the book maybe jurassic park maybe Jurassic. Jaws, I think. Jaws, yeah. There are a couple what Stephen King. What with Jaws? There was a shark, and it just—it's just like the shark is swimming up, she's swimming away. I, I, I the shark. Da-na, da-na, da-na. That's that's literally what the words are. Yeah, it's da-na, 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 for three hundred pages. Da na 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 da da da. And then it's like chomp. <laughs> <laughs> the final word is chomp. Chomp, yeah. Smile, you. But yeah. It's a good movie. Um, have you seen, have you read Perks of Being a Wallflower? I have not. No, I have read it. I have read it. Have you seen the movie? Phenomenal. It's One of my favorites. Very good. I think that's like young, um, or no, what is it? Coming of age, Don really, yes. really. That young. is, yes. Yeah. Emma Watson, uh, Ezra Miller, who I age quite well. Quite well but yeah, did not age quite well, but I, I really like their character. He's the late lead actor. Um, he, oh my god. I literally have a crush on his name. <laughs> Mia, me, no. I literally have a crush on him. What's his name? <laughs> Wild Liam. La- Liam. 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 He's phenomenal on it. Yeah. So again, I, I like I've told you, I he played the don't. Percy Jackson. He, he did. He did. I remember that. Um, I don't cry at movies. That is one of the closest I've come. Because the only scene in movies that can make me cry is "It's Not Your Fault" from Goodwill Hunting. Phenomenal scene. That one has come close. Like, that one came close. Hmm? Um, but the, like, end scene where he's, like, on the phone with his sister. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, oh, my God, Paul Rudd does so such a fantastic sad. job as a teacher, the English teacher. We accept the love we think we deserve. That, like, replays oh my in my head God. sometimes. Like, when I think about stuff. That's such a good line. It's and such a phenomenal line. Yeah. Such a good movie, and it's a funny movie. Yeah. What's in a Mary Mary Kate? Yeah. She's so funny. And like, I don't know the like way. Two week anniversary. Yeah. Like, like. And the way they explore, like, um, it was kind of weird that like they were all seniors and he was a freshman, but like we can look past that, I guess. But I like how they explore like um like messiness of like teenage relationships and stuff like that. Like um that one scene where they're all playing truth or dare and um. And he has like the inner monologue, like, like, like yeah. it was like, are, "Are you happy with Mary Kate?" And he's like, "No, no, I, I want to die. Like, yeah. I, I will hope we break up soon." And that's all in his head. And then, and then he was like, "Um, what's his friend's name? Who does Ezra play?" Ezra, what's his uh, name? Patrick. Patrick. Um, Patrick was like, "Um, I dare you to kiss the prettiest girl in the room." And oh my kissed, god! He kissed Emma Watson's character. He kissed, he kissed his girlfriend. Which how mad. I would, I would. There's a tick. tick. Ew. Oh, I don't know why there's a tick in here. Ew, is it alive? Yeah, I can, it's not dying, so that's why I know it's a tick. Oh, can you cut my shoe, please? Oh my god. Because I felt it crawling on my skin. Oh, are you. Did it bite you? No, but it's still alive. I think that's a tick. That's. Uh, is that a. Yeah. That looks tick. like a tick. Probably picked up an outdoor adventure. I was biking on the Union Urban. Oh my god. Ew. Did it make a noise? Let me up the chair. Is it still alive? Yeah, that's a tick. Okay, I think it's dead. Tick dealt with. Um, before I'm edits this out. Sorry about that. There was a tick. Um, where is the thing? No, person being off of it. It's it's phenomenal. Yeah. The tunnel scene, the scene where his parents find out. Yeah. 
Um, you know what I really want someone to do? Like, you know when um, Charlie's sister's boyfriend makes her, like, a mixtape? Mm. Like, he, he burns it onto a CD. I think that's so cute. But, like, I don't have a radio player or, like, a CD player or anything, but, like... I or a boyfriend. Get, or... <laughs> her work, she, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> I think that would be so cute. <laughs> oh, that's oh, not chicken, nice. The ticket's still alive, by the way. Oh, oh my god. I got you're, you're horrible. I horrible. That was good. You're horrible. The opportunity was there. You're welcome. Tragically. Is this where we want to end the episode? Yeah. Or do we want to keep discussing? What do you want to discuss? Um, well, I mean, so first being Wallhars and Well, I mean, so first being Wallhars and Alma, but yeah. I mean... Then I think there's just like a lot of like, it was a big book. It's gonna get turned into a movie. It's gonna be whatever. Like I think that's kind of how Fault in Our Stars is. Um, the Hate You Give was a very good book. The movie wasn't very good. It was okay, it wasn't like. I had some good scenes. Yeah, I like Amanda. Um, I don't. Is that her name? The main character who played. I hear what they did with the ending because the ending of the original one is so good. And I feel like, like, unless I completely misremember the ending of the book, they changed it. I read it a while ago. I read it in, like, like a couple of years ago, so I don't... I read it, I'll say, 7th grade? When I read it, 7th, 8th grade? Then. Um, phenomenal book. Yeah. Um, I will say, I think I might, like, On the Come Up better. On the Come Up? No, I haven't read that. I think they're turning that to a movie soon. Cool. But... That's another... Oh, I started the show. Um, it's A24 release. You probably know about it. The Sympathizer. It's about, I've heard. It's about um, this half Vietnamese, half French um, spy mm. who's working like, um, he's stationed in southern Vietnam and he's working like with, he's giving like intel to the Viet Cong. And that's based off of a book. And I really want to read that. Mm. I really like when they do shows based off books. I feel like you get to like. You get more, yeah. More. That's why I really liked, I didn't like the It movie. The 2017, the 2017. Oh, yeah. But I, the Tim Curry miniseries, I like that a lot more. I didn't even know there was a miniseries. There is with Tim Curry as Pennywise, and I think he's scarier <laughs> than Skarsgård. Yeah, probably. I can't remember which Skarsgård it is, but... Because there's 17 of them. Yeah. Oh. But I, like, I just, I think it's better. Um, And I think that's... I'm trying to think of other TV shows, uh, books that have been turned into both movies and tv shows um the queen's gambit i haven't read the book so i don't know the accuracy but i thought the show was good um on um the abc murders was turned into a uh series that was very good that was starring john malkovich who's in my opinion one of the most underrated actors uh being john malkovich is fantastic mm-hmm. and more people should watch it um, he's very good in Of Mice and Men with Gary Sinise. Uh, I just, I love John Malkovich, and I think that series is pretty good, because I guess Chrissy's my favorite author, mm-hmm. and I love the Kenneth Branagh, Branagh? Branagh? Yeah. I love his new, what he's doing with her, Cupro. Yeah. Especially Murder on the Orient Express was fantastic. Um, I actually really liked Death on the Nile. I didn't think it was as good as Murder, but... Murder was better. I think it was without doubt better, but I... I I liked Death on the Nile a lot more than everyone else did. Maybe it's because I really like the book. Yeah. Because that's my problem also. When you're making movies based on 100-year-old books, like, my one friend always says, like, oh, well, it's so cliche, it's so predictable. I'm like, you have to remember, cliche. yeah, you, ha- you have to remember that it's cliche, it was but cliche. it invented the cliche. Yeah, like, it is, like the, it is the origin of the cliche. Yeah. So you can't judge something on being predictable when everything and its mother has copied it yeah. for the past 100 years. And I think that's the biggest... Yeah. Um, Haunting in Venice was also very good. I really liked it. Just like how Chinatown was good? Just like how Chinatown was good. <laughs> we really gotta see Chinatown. You're supposed to see that. I have not actually seen Chinatown. I've seen clips from it. And the clips I've seen are very good. I love when people say that. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, have you guys seen Breaking Bad? Oh, no, I've just seen clips with, like, slime at the bottom and then the subway servers. The brain rot. I am the senior. Yeah, the brain rot. I am. The Breaking Bad is so brain rot if you're watching it like that. 
there's two ways to watch Breaking Bad. It's kind of like how there's two ways to watch American Psycho. You can watch it and be like, dude, Patrick Bateman is so cool. You can watch it and be like, oh, this is a satire on the other group. Shout out to all the Skylar haters out there. You guys are wrong. I think Skylar hate is totally unjustified. Like, she did cheat on it is. It is in season three. She's poorly written in season three. That's true. That's true. Every other season, she's, like, fun. Especially season five, I actually think she's very good. And season one, I think she's very good. Season three, she's... Right? Isn't season three is where she is when she she's... Yeah. That one, she's bad. But then again, season three, I also just thought was kind of a weak point in the series. Yeah. Because then also, I think that was the, when the whole Marie bit, with, like, her pretending to be other people and, like, going to real estate, real estate sales. Yeah. That was just such a dumb plot point. So maniac. Yeah, like, it was such a dumb plot. Like, why did that need to exist? Uh, they needed to, like, give her something. They needed to give her something, and they just put was a poor thing to do. But then, like, in season four and five, like, when she's laundering the money, she's so good at that Yeah, point. she did so much for her husband. And all she gets is hate. Well, she hated him. That's true. I don't know. I liked it. I love it. But then it's, like, the same thing. It's, like, the people are like, oh, Walter White's so cool. Like, no, you're not supposed to like Walter White. He's a can't. terrible the he person. Jesse. The way he treats Jesse. God, I love Jesse. I love Aaron Paul. Because he's in that, Paul. he's in Bojack, Bojack, and I think those two on their own are enough to make him one of my favorite actors. Can it's we like, find Chris and have, like, a, some sort of, like, tequila brand? Good for them. But I love that. Alright. What do you think? Better Call Saul Breaking Bad. Right. Which one's better? I think without doubt. Better Call Saul. I, the fact that, I think the fact that Bob Odenkirk played Saul Goodman perfectly for 11 seasons and oh, never won an Emmy. And never won an Emmy. He was robbed. He was genuinely just robbed. The fact that Better Call Saul as a whole went six seasons without winning an Emmy is criminal. But especially the fact that Bob Odenkirk went 11 seasons playing a character to perfection. Let up uh, until the last season. Like, they didn't, like, uh, it wasn't a weak season at all. The last season, usually you, no, you get to... No, I, like, I think the last the last season is what tipped. Because for season so five, I think I still liked Breaking Bad better. Season six is season what tipped it. Season six is what tipped me. Yeah. It's so phenomenal. They're contrasting between, like, um, uh... Bob is Gene Takovich, and that's in black and white, even though it's in the future. Mm-hmm. And then in color, it's like him in the past. And then, like, the scene with Nacho, and I when think, he's like, I in think the... that's so interesting. I think the fact because you, everyone knows black and white, it's old. It's, yeah. But the fact that they don't it says use it, all the color it, from his they don't life use it as gone. time. Yeah, they use exactly. it to show that his life is dull. Yeah, it's exactly. so good. And the performances are phenomenal. And that final, like, one of the final speeches where he's like, like I knew, like, he would have been dead yeah. in jail. Yeah. Lost. Yeah. If it weren't for me. Yeah, and um, Ignacio's him. character just like such good development. And when he's on the phone with his dad, and his dad's like, "All you need to do is call the police. Like they can help oh. you." And he was like crying. He was like, "No, I can't." I can't. And he was like, and his like Never final saw. speech at the end, when he was like just completely dogging everyone. So so good. Very good. It's Don't so be, good. Like, um, I was more emotionally in- invested in Better Call Saul because you get to see um, Jimmy's progression into like a morally corrupt individual. Well, I would even say like even by the end, yeah, because like, still trying to prove that he's a good guy. Because mm, he's so much more morally gray. Like he's pretty, he's pretty bad in Breaking Bad. Yeah, obviously, like, and they kind of explore morally gray with Jesse. I would say Jesse's pretty morally gray, especially when it comes to the whole like killing kids thing. Yeah. Um. But, but, but like in Better Call, and but like Walter White is straight up bad. Like Walter yeah. White's an evil person. Yeah, and like he doesn't even but, try and deny it. Like yeah. even at the end, he was like, "I liked it. I did." I am me. the danger. Yeah. yeah. Like that's what the whole "I am, he, like, I am the danger" speech is. Jimmy tries to. He started at a young age, and he's trying to be a better person. He like justifies it by like doing it for other people. Like he helps other people. You know what scene I love? What scene? The scene where, uh, oh my god, what's her name? Kim. Uh, Kim breaks up with him. Oh my god, that's a good scene. She's it's like, like weird. But I, I, I can't. 
we're awful from yeah. everyone like to each other and he's like no i can like i can change that's the only time like an i can change speech because we've seen a, a hundred like okay. change speeches only time i actually was like like he's she, actually, i did it for you kim i did this for you and that for you and she was like i didn't i i like the person i've become with you is i don't even recognize myself anymore i don't like myself anymore because of the way we like enable each other done. to be yeah and i think that and like as opposed to the rest of the series where he gets mad he's not he's desperate he's bargaining he's like like you can tell that he genuinely loves her and that's why i think he fully like sw- switches straight up evil yeah in the rest he's like of the season. he's like all right that's it i can't say that but he's just, yeah he's just like screw it i'm gonna like, like, what's the point? There's nothing left. He has no family. He has nothing. His brother's so dead. Yeah, his parents are dead. Also, that's another thing I love. Broke up with him. The thing with Howard, when Howard dies, because obviously, like, the, the, like, this dude that they've been trying to ruin his life. I like Howard's car. Sorry, side note. It's a it's really a nice very car. Very nice car. God, we could, we, can we please just have an entire episode dedicated to Better Call Saul? Yeah. And Breaking Bad? Like, hide behind it. Like, we can talk about El Camino. Yeah, we will. <laughs> We'll be like, yeah, El Camino was so good. Anyways. Anyway, um, Better Call Saul. Because now this episode is just doing Better Call Saul. Yeah. Let's probably end it before we just <laughs> further devolve. All right. Thank you guys for listening. This has been your Out of Order, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.